have a seat. We didn't get dressed up for nothing, right? Like, this is a good, good day. Matthew 28, suddenly there was a great earthquake. And not just, it's not because the Zags won, all right, settle down. But uh, look at this. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. So all the dudes are out cold. The ladies are still standing, okay? Ladies are like, hey, come on, dudes, wake up. But then the angel spoke to the women, right? Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Amen? Come on, that gets us excited. That's good news. Today, he has risen. Today is Resurrection Sunday. What a great day to sing together to pray together, to celebrate new family, uh, getting baptized. At all three services, we have people scheduled to get baptized. And I know there's more coming. Some of you that are sitting there, God is calling you to to faithful obedience to follow him. Not just respect Jesus and, and wear your Easter tie on Sunday and be like, okay, you know, Jesus, I respect you, I get it. But like, follow him, want to seek to repent to him. Baptism is an outward sign of the resurrection work alive in you that you're trusting in the blood of Jesus Christ that's washed away your sin. And the Holy Spirit alive in you that's removed your fear of death, fear, your, your fear of anything because of him. Um, I, I hope you believe this, that faith in his resurrection produces new and lasting life. Amen? Amen? And in the book of Acts, known as the actions of the apostles or actions of the Holy Spirit in the church, we see Peter has moved from denying Jesus. Remember, before the, cro- the, the, the rooster would crow three, three times, we see Peter denies Jesus. He's afraid of not a cancel culture, something much worse. He's afraid of being crucified. He's afraid. And so he, he, what's amazing, after meeting the risen Lord, he goes from denying Jesus to preaching Jesus, to boldly facing this mob of, of, of religious skeptics. And look at what he says. Like he doesn't pull any punches. This is Acts chapter 2 and 23. With the help of lawless Gentiles, you nailed him to the cross and killed him. Right, But God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life, for death could not keep him in its grip. Peter is basically saying, through Christ's resurrection, God has made Jesus, whom you crucified, both Savior and Lord. Lord and Christ. Leader, King, Deliverer, and our Messiah. And if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. The cross is the bridge between us and God. There's a great gulf. There's a great abyss uh, be- between us and God, like, right? Uh, and there's this great divorce. And yet Jesus came and pursued and wooed us, suffered and died. And that, that cross is the bridge. The resurrection is the vehicle to, to cross that bridge. And the driver, okay, the driver in the seat of that car is the Holy Spirit. He's done all of it. You can't pat yourself on the back. Well, I went to Easter today, even wore my tie, and I'm, I sang out. I said amen. I, I laughed at Josh's silly jokes, and here we go, right? So much more than that. If you're taking notes, again, the cross is the bridge. The resurrection is the vehicle, right? And the Holy Spirit is the driver. 2,000 years ago when Jesus rose up out of the tomb, we don't see a Facebook or Instagram reveal, okay? He, he reveals himself to two women in a garden. And these two women could not conceal what, what Jesus had done. They couldn't keep it to themselves, and neither could the, the disciples. And pretty soon the world is turned upside down in a good way because of the resurrection life, the good news that Jesus is alive, that he's conquered sin and death. The Christ resurrection truly brings transformative and lasting and real change by his spirit indwelling us. Again, Peter goes from denying to preaching. He goes from avoiding people to running towards it, right? Remember like David runs out to meet Goliath? 
Like he, he doesn't go like, well, okay, someone else will get it. He runs out towards it, and that is a work of the Spirit. In the same way, the Spirit is alive in this fisherman. That's what Peter was, right? A swearing fisherman. Frustrated he couldn't catch enough fish, and now he goes from fishing for fish to fishing for men. And if you are a real disciple of Jesus, you will fish for men. If you aren't fishing, you aren't following. I'll say it again. If you aren't fishing, you aren't following. <laughs> some of you have followed a, a friend's invitation here. Or some of you are like, well, my, my cute girlfriend invited me, so I'm here. You know, Can you preach a short message, please? Okay, I want to get to my Easter dinner or whatever. But, man, that, that's great that you're here and, and God has, has used a, a friend of yours or a family member to invite you here. But I pray that Jesus doesn't just catch you, but he fillets you. Some of you are like, what did he just say? <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of violent church is this? Honey, there's still time to leave. Let's get out of here. What in the world? Filet? Yes, I, I didn't make a mistake. The word is sharper than any two-edged sword. We need to be cut by it. We need to be pierced by it. He was pierced for our transgressions. Right? Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. That sounds pretty bloody to me. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Boy, we want to, to, to share in his glory, but we don't want to share in his suffering. We don't want to be crucified uh, with him. We don't want to identify with his death. And in this click, bait, impulse-driven world, the thought of dying to self sounds terrible. And so we just want to keep scrolling to our, our screens of idolatry. Oh, it's, I don't want to miss out. I don't want to miss out. I got to keep scrolling instead of start praying and submitting. And friends, I'm preaching to myself daily. I got to die, right? I'm one of those ADD guys. Like, what, what's going on over here? What, what, what? Did I miss out? So, like, these, these things, man, I need a, I don't need a smartphone. I need to, like, go back to the 80s. Like, what did they use back then, you know? <laughs> like, it, we have to die to self. It's because of you Jesus had to die. The problem with you is you. Uh, happy Easter, all right? The problem with you is you. <laughs> and the, the problem with me is me. And, uh, honey, don't say amen, but okay, right? <laughs> Uh, a real preacher doesn't tickle ears, right? I'm not here to entertain you and tell you what you want to hear. You don't need a little pep talk, okay? You don't need a pep talk. You need to die for him to rise in you. You need to be cut to the core. Um, how I, I shared this on Good Friday, and I'll share it again. Imagine, uh, imagine you know, a friend of you a friend of yours tells you to go to the doctor, like they're worried about you, you're showing some signs and symptoms that there's something wrong, and so you finally ought to just, you know, the nagging friend to get them to leave you alone, or maybe your nagging spouse, you're like, fine, I'll schedule an appointment, and you go to the doctor, and the doctor reveals through MRI and x-ray and all that, just says, man, you need a heart transplant. You are sick. Your heart is sick, and you're like, ah, oh, you know what? Thank you for telling me that. Thank you for telling the truth. In fact, you go up to your friend and you thank your friend. And then years later, the doctor goes, hey, like, what's going on? You never scheduled the appointment. You never scheduled surgery. Well, no, no, no. Hey, I showed up. You told. I went to the appointment. I heard the news. But you never got on the operating table. Ezekiel 36, 26, if you want to write that down. God can melt your heart of stone. There needs to be, there can't be two operating systems. There can't be two hearts. There needs to be one, and it needs to be his heart, his spirit and dwelling in us. Colossians 1.21, once you were alienated from God, once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. Romans 3.10, as the scriptures say, no one is righteous, no, not even one. The, 
the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and he wants to kill you softly, right, by telling you, oh, no, 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 your positive thinking, your positive vibes, they will get you, you know, your good behavior will get you into the good place, and you just need, you know, all pathways, all religions lead to him. Don't mind Jesus saying, I am the resurrection and life. Don't mind him saying, he is the only way. I am the way, the truth, and life. No, 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 there's other ways, and you'll be fine. That's about as silly as someone saying, you know what? Uh, and, and I love eucalyptus oil and oregano oil. Going, You know what? This is the cure for COVID. I've discovered it. It's the cure also for cancer. It's the cure-all. And you're like, okay, you do you. And you know, well, How does that work? How loving is it to you go, well, you do you. I don't want to offend you. So you keep using your oil or you keep using your Advil or you keep using whatever. How, how cruel is it? And yet we're afraid of the cancel culture going, no, man, if we rise up and say, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the resurrection. He's the only way. The, the, the real pandemic is ignorance of, of who our real Savior is. That's the real pandemic, the sickness of sin. I want to I share with you, on Friday morning, I did not want to get out of bed, okay? <laughs> Friday morning, uh, I, I, I came to the church, and there was 24 men that showed up. And these men encouraged me so much. We, we had some coffee, we had some donuts, listened to Matt Chandler preach a, uh, just a 10-minute little testimony. Then we broke up into five different groups. There was four men in my breakout group, and, and one of them, his name is Jason, and I got permission to share this. Jason said, hey, you know, I'm a small business owner and uh, needed to uh, move some cash, and so $7,000 of cash, it was in a rolled up. Uh, he had lost it, and he said, man, I think God is trying to tell me something like this. I, I keep worrying. I keep fretting. And across the table is my friend Andrew, and Andrew uh, encourages him, talks about you know, real provision, and, and, uh, and talks about Financial Peace University, all that stuff. It was, it was amazing. Later that afternoon, Andrew's wife, a perfect stranger to Jason, right, finds the, the cash, finds it. That day, a few hours later, and it makes the news. It's like, what? we have so many, like, why would someone be that honest? $7,000, they give it back, and then they, they, they roll footage on the, uh, in, the, in the business to see, like, oh, okay, yeah, it is Jason. And, you know, he gets the cash back. He's texting me. Oh, my gosh. But if you ask Jason, he was at the first service, he would tell you the real treasure is Jesus Christ. And I was lost, and now I've been found. And if, if, if Jesus has a GPS that good to, to link up, well, okay, yeah, we're going to do, do you think he can find you spiritually? Amen. I hope your treasure is not money, it's not sex, it's not anything, but him, finding him. Mankind's main problem is ignorance of who Jesus really is and how he can give new life. That's the real, that's the real problem. And here's a couple questions. What is so significant about Christ's Resurrection. How does this deal with our problem? Number two, how did Peter go from denying Christ to preaching Christ? Did he, you know, drink a little Red Bull and Red Bull gave him wings and that's why, you know, it just helped him out? Uh, number three, how can the Holy Spirit make a difference in your life that's so significant the people around you can tell there's something going on? I want to tell, with, uh, tell you I was, we, we've been watching as a family the, the 19, I think, 77 uh, Jesus of Nazareth, incredible story, six-hour series, right? I mean, just, <laughs> and we got to the part, and this just stood out to me so much. John the Baptist is in prison, and he knows his time is coming, his time is short, and you want to know what he's doing? Is he in a corner of the prison, scared and alone? No, he's preaching his guts out. He's preaching, I mean, just preaching with fire all the way up to his death. And, and is that because, you know, he, he just, you know, just felt, you know, just positive? No, the Holy Spirit alive. And he can, he can remove your fear of death. He can remove any fear. And he, it's, the, it's the fire of God. It's the Spirit melting your, your heart of stone and, and removing fear, giving you faith, and, and have you go from denying and, and avoiding to running towards and chasing and being fishers of men. He can do that. Well, let's, let's, I want to start preaching. So let's, uh, that's the appetizer. Here we go. Here we go. This is Acts chapter 2 and verse 32. Here's the real sermon. It's right here. God raised Jesus from the dead. And this is Peter preaching. This is that fisherman that was scared. 
Not anymore. You see this. God raised Jesus from the dead, and we are all witnesses of this. Now he is exalted to the place, place of highest honor in heaven at God's right hand. And in the Father, as he had promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us. Just as you see and hear today. For David himself never ascended into heaven. Yet he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. So let everyone... Someone say everyone. 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 Everyone in Israel. Know for certain. Say certain. certain. Not skeptical, not wavering, but certain and solid. Look at it. That God has made this Jesus whom you crucified to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's words pierced. Someone say pierced. 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 I told you, fillet time, right? Pierced their hearts. And they said to him and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? So they don't pick up stones to stone them. They don't gnash their teeth. They don't grumble. Brothers, what should we do? That's a humble place to be. Are you in that state even now? Verse 38, Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for, for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you and to your children. Oh, praise God. To our children. Some of us, you're struggling in your parenting. You maybe lost hope. Isn't that good news? The ultimate parent is our Heavenly Father and His Spirit not just electrifying our hearts, but our children. And even to the Gentiles, that's, that's non-Jews. Um, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time. And so I'm going to preach for a long time. No, that's okay. Uh, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Those who believed what Peter said, we're baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. Do you believe revival can hit the Tri-Cities? Do you believe, I mean, wouldn't that be amazing? I had someone walking up to the, you know, from the car, walking up going, hey, I want to get baptized. I mean, there's like, the, people Facebook messaging, hey, I want to get baptized. Like, people excited. Revival can happen by the work of the Spirit. Do you believe that? You got to know that. Today's takeaway is since Jesus has risen from the dead, you must repent of your independent life and you must receive by his spirit new life. So repent and receive. In other words, turn and take. Say that with me. Ready? Turn and take. In other words, receive the spirit. Let's look at the first point, which is repent of your independent life. Life. Repent means to not just be sorry, but to have a change of heart. Don't just listen to the doctor tell you and show you the x rays, show you systematically and sophisticated, like you are dead, like you need new life, you need a new heart transplant. And don't just nod your head and say amen, but cry out to him and say, Lord, what must I do? Like, I need you to cut me, to grow me, to save me, and to fill me. The cross is the bridge, the resurrection is the vehicle, and the Holy Spirit is the driver. Who's in your driver's seat? Acts 2 and verse 36, so let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified be both Lord and Messiah. I want to give you guys some historical background. We see that Jesus actually suffered and died. Time, timing is perfect. Timing is perfect. That Jesus died on the Passover. We know, like in, in the Jewish heritage, we, we see in the Old Testament that the Passover, they would commemorate and remember that the death angel in the last plague, right, passed over the people because they had faith in the blood of the Lamb. Jesus is crucified on Passover, right? So Jesus is the ultimate Passover. He's the old, if you want to write that down, Jesus is the ultimate Passover. And then we see in the book of Acts, we see that Jesus calls them to wait 
Why does he have them wait? Because timing is impeccable. God's timing is perfect at Pentecost, which is also another Jewish celebration to rememorate and commemorate God's provision. And we see the ultimate provision is the Holy Spirit. And so exactly 50 days after Passover, the Holy Spirit is dispensed on the church. It's huge. And so I'll say this, if you're taking notes, the Holy Spirit is the ultimate provision and Christ's blood is the ultimate Passover. Let me say it again. The Holy Spirit is the ultimate Pentecost and Christ's blood is the ultimate Passover. But Peter knows, man, there's so many Jews, they're coming from different places. Some of them, um, 50 days earlier, were yelling, crucify him. And Peter doesn't set up a Facebook group to cancel them. He doesn't hate on them. Instead, he loves them enough, even though they're just coming to another Easter service. They're just coming for another, uh, you know, they're coming for another Pentecost. They're coming for a Jewish celebration. So they're doing their religious duty. They're getting dressed up, and they show up, and they're like, who's this crazy street preacher? What's going on? Who's this guy? Peter. Who is this guy? What is he doing preaching? He's interrupting our nice religious festival. What's he talking about, a relationship with God? What? what? And Peter, <laughs> uh, he doesn't give him cupcakes and rainbows. I mean, there's nothing here that, about that. He's like, Jesus was killed unjustly by you. <laughs> he just goes right after it. And he's like, your hero, David, wasn't able to fulfill it. He talked about the one that would come. He would talked about the one out of the root of Jesse. That's Jesse was, was David's father. Out of that line, out of that lineage would come the one. And David wasn't able to fulfill it. But Christ is the king of kings that climbed down from a throne to climb up on a cross for you and me. And to dispense his Holy Spirit so we could have access to God, relationship with God. Good news. And so they're, they're coming in to Jerusalem, many of them confident in their certainty of the law of God. Boy, they know their Bible. They know the Torah. They, they know the law. They got it. My grandma, who's here, was a law professor at Gonzaga, Gozags. And uh, that would be, you know, if my grandma was going 120 in a school zone, uh, don't do that, grandma, but let's just say, and she got pulled over, and she said, officer, settle down, okay? I don't know why you pulled me over. Okay, I went to law school. I know the law. Okay, all right. And uh, I, I know the law better than you, officer, so why don't you just let me keep going? I don't need a ticket because I know the law, and I know the judge. You know? <laughs> would, that, would that work out, right? She's like, and I know your boss. You know, like, that would just be, <laughs> you're like, whoa, <laughs> grandma. <laughs> and yet, that's about as silly as, as these Jews that are like, oh, I know the law. I know the story. I know the Exodus account. I know Moses and the prophets. I got it down. I've been to Bible school. I'm good. I grew up knowing this. I only watch, the only rated R movies I watch is like The Passion and Braveheart. But you know, like, I'm good. Come on. <laughs> okay. In The Matrix, okay. But anyways, L look at this. He, so he is going after their hearts. He is cutting, by the Spirit is the one cutting them. It's not his preaching. It's what's behind the preaching. It's the Holy Spirit piercing their hearts. He's, he's essentially, you killed him, but God raised him. One more time. You killed him, but God raised him. Acts 2, 37. Peter's words pierced their hearts. And they said to him and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? I want to ask you, I, I, I beg you, I plead with you. Will you come to a humble state where it's like, Lord, what must I do? What do you want me to do? Here I am. You want to send me to the waters of baptism? Okay. I'll do it. You want to send me out to, to stop hiding from people? I will do it. You want me to start reading this book? I will do it. I don't like reading, but I have ADD. I stroke, man. I want to be a student of your word to show off you. Does the message of Jesus pierce your heart, my dear friends? 
Do you have an attitude that now says, what must I do to be saved? You know, during this pandemic, one of the things that has really wrecked my heart in so many ways is I miss so much going into the jail. They won't let me. Even in, in phase three, I still am not allowed with, with some of my brothers to, to get in there and preach in the jail. And I miss that so much. One of the things that I miss so much is that they've all hit rock bottom. They're all like, hey, what must I do? Some of you are like, well, I hope, I hope there's some decisions today. Um, I hope, uh, you know, my aunt or my, my son, or instead of going, Lord, I, oh, I need to be broken by your word. I need to be pierced. I need to be cut. Lord, my arrogance or my pride or my stubbornness or my lack of faith or my fear, Lord, Jesus, heal me. Maybe some of you still don't think you need to be saved, that you are doing just fine in your independent living. You're doing just fine as you, you think to yourself. Apart from God's intervention and spirit, we are like creatures of habit, and these habits can get ugly. And without Jesus, we are like unthinking animals, creatures of instinct, wasting our life. Like I said, scrolling on screens of empty idolatry. Those that haven't experienced Christ, Christ's resurrection power in our soul will continue to scoff at things that they don't understand and refuse to turn to Christ. Because of that, we will be destroyed if we don't trust in him. You need to repent of your independent and ignorant living. Some of you think you have plenty of time Some of you think you have plenty of time. This life is but a vapor. Choose this day whom you will serve today. Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait for next Easter. Turn to him now. Let him be king and savior of your life. And even as I say that, I'm I'm saying, Lord, in what ways do I need to repent? In what ways do I need to change? What ways do I need not just more information? I need transformation. I need you to grow me. I, I know this is like overused. I'm going to share it again because I don't really have a better one in my arsenal. Like the metamorphosis of, a, of the, this fat caterpillar to change into a butterfly like blows my mind. How much more can he take the walking dead, spiritually walking dead that are spiritual zombies, to walking with Christ, to, to repenting, to, to praying, to preaching, to living, to submitting The key is to receive new life, not just repent and turn, but we have to take, we have to embrace, we have to submit. Acts 2.38, each of you must repent of your sins, turn to God, be baptized in the name of Jesus and the forgiveness of sins. Then you will receive the receiving of the Holy Spirit. I'll close with this. The death of Christ was the result of God's wrath falling on him Instead of us. It's huge. I'll say it again. The death of Christ was the result of of God's wrath falling on him instead of us. And his resurrection. His resurrection was, was the result of God's reward falling on us because of him. His resurrection can become our resurrection. Praise God that when our bodies do die and we breathe our last Breath, his resurrection power will cause us to ascend to heaven. That's great, great news. But friends, let me tell you good news for right now. His resurrection power can put wind in your sails even now. And, and some of you, maybe, maybe in your marriages, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm continuing to do some, some stupid stuff. Or I'm continuing my, uh, man, there's still time. Seize the day. Carpe diem, seize the day like the time is now. Let's repent. There's nothing more beautiful than that, to turn to him. In a few moments, I'm going to challenge you to respond. Some of you are like, oh, I don't want to lift my hand. Someone will see me raise my hand. My wife might feel my hand go up. Friends, there's nothing more beautiful than that. A big, tough, burly man came up to me. I thought he was going to, you know, just give me a hug. And he was, he was crying because he was so proud of his wife uh, and, and how he is using his, his wife to disciple women. And one of them got baptized. I mean, he was just, it was, he was a proud 
He was a proud husband. And a, it was awesome to see that. Come on, don't. There's nothing more beautiful than crying out to heaven to repent and turn to him. Jesus says, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father. Don't be afraid of what people think. And some of you, and may, may you've followed Jesus for a long time, but you've kind of gone astray in some ways. You've fallen to the side. That's another reason to raise your hand. And so let's bow our heads and let's pray and let's respond. Jesus, help us to respond. Help us to turn to you, Lord Jesus. And I pray, I know, I know you've been working in hearts this morning. If there's any hearts that need to respond in some way, that they would lift their hand to you and say, Jesus, pick me up. Only you, amen. God sees your hands. Come on, don't be shy. Lift those hands to heaven. Amen. Ask Jesus to pull you up, to pick you up. Amen. You can put your hands down. Jesus, thank you for moving. Holy Spirit, take the wheel. Take control. Lord, we need your resurrection. We need your power in our life. Thank you for moving in this place. It's in your precious name we pray and all God's people said, amen. Let's stand. Oh,